Welcome everyone to another roundtable session. Uh, today we are hosting a topic about uh, building a virtual work relationships. Uh, we're really excited to uh, introduce our mentors here that are sitting on our panel. Um, we have folks uh, that are working remotely, as you can probably tell from uh, their pictures. Uh, so we'll we'll be sharing what people are doing to be really become successful, be successful in uh, you know, continue to nurture their work relationships that they had before the pandemic. And then now after things have been opening up, uh, companies are still, you know, allowing uh, employees to work from home. So how do you manage, you know, the virtual life versus the in-person uh, relationships that you'll be building? So we're really excited about this topic um, and uh, having a great conversation about it. Um, before we get started, I want, did want to let everybody know that we are going to be recording this session. So if you uh, aren't able to stay on for the full time, or if you have a friend that isn't able to join, uh, make sure to check the community for the recording link uh, when we post it after this session. And then one final note before I pass it over to Randy, who's our guest mo moderator for this session. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, things to share around the topic as the mentors are providing their uh, insights, please raise your hand um, or uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, post things on chat uh, and we'll get to your questions or comments. Um, so with that, I'll pass it over to Randy. Thank you, Kanal. And thank you to the panelists for participating and thank you for uh, to the audience for making time to show up and listen to this really important um, topic. So today, as Kanal said, we're gonna go ahead and introduce the panelists real quickly and then jump right into our topic. Uh, so as Kanal said, uh, my name is Randy Emelo. I am, let's see who the slide says I am. Mm -hmm. Who am I today? Oh, I'm chief strategist um, at Mentor Spaces and uh, actually um, have quite a bit of experience in mentoring. I wrote a book called Modern Mentoring and over 50 articles uh, on uh, mentoring and mentoring processes. And I'm really, really happy to be a part of Mentor Spaces and what we're doing for the underrepresented community out there. So with that, let's talk, uh, see who the panelists are today. Uh, if you would, uh, Romario, uh, go ahead and take a moment and introduce yourself. Uh, hey guys, uh, my name is Mario. Um, I'm a senior data scientist over at GE Healthcare right now. Um, I, my one month anniversary in this position is in two days. Um, so I think I'll be able to offer some unique perspective on this topic in terms of never meeting your team in person. Uh, prior to that, I worked at OMD for about two years. Um, I worked on the McDonald's account, um, and then I also worked on our U.S. Army account. And then before that, I worked in clinical research over at Rush University. Um, at some point during that whole timeline, I completed my first master's. Um, since we were in a pandemic and I had nothing better to do, I started my second one, which I'm halfway through now. Well, that's fantastic, or Mario. I'm going to say it right now. <laughs> You've actually participated with us before, and we've appreciated all your comments in the community. Uh, Patricia. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. So um, I have a bit of a colorful background, but I will keep it short. So I came over into business uh, starting out in the sciences. So uh, I have a bachelor's degree in animal science and pre-vet med. Um, got my master's in public health, worked in a micro and molecular biology lab, taught bio at Michigan State University, and then eventually moved on to my MBA where I focused on supply chain. And I was the CEO of Spartan Consulting Inc. So an all MBA run uh, consulting firm where we teamed up with uh, professors and then actually, uh, you know, delivered projects to uh, clients and companies. And then from there, uh, I got my foot in the door with Ernst & Young, uh, was a manager with Ernst & Young. After that, uh, did a short stint in private equity, uh, small middle market manufacturing. And then from there, uh, moved on to procurability, which is where I'm currently at. 
So thank you for having me today. Great. So it'll be good to, with all these transitions in your fantastic and varied background to hear from you on this topic about now working virtually. Uh, Kevin. So I, I do not have as cool a background as Patricia, um, but, but I, I am a colleague of Patricia. I am a senior consultant at Procurability. Um, I actually studied supply chain and operations at my undergrad at Miami of Ohio. I fell in love with it. And ever since graduation about five years ago, I've been working in that space. Um, so right out of college, I did a rotational program where I moved every six months to a different business unit for an industrial manufacturing company called Textron, um, which was a great experience. So took on different roles, different locations, met new people, um, and then did that for two years. And upon completion of the program, I started consulting. Um, so I initially joined the Hackett Group. Um, in New York City, so born and raised, uh, born and raised in New York. I moved back to New York after the program, started consulting. Um, I was with the Hackett Group for about two and a half years, and then I joined Procurability um, September 2020. So in the middle of the pandemic, I have also not met a single colleague um, face to face. Have not met a single client face to face. So definitely, I'm um, keen on this this topic of working effectively in a virtual space. Great, thank you so much, Kevin. We can share stories about uh, Oxford, Ohio sometime. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and start off talking um, a little bit, just to softball questions. What kind of personal difficulties have you struggled with as work's gone more virtual? Uh, first of all, that's a caveat. Um, before the pandemic, were your interactions more face-to-face? -face? And did uh, the pandemic actually usher in um, virtual work for you in a different work arrangement with your colleagues and your customers and your clients? And uh, why don't we go ahead and go with Mario, jump in there and on this topic. Yeah, so um, for me, I think, we all went through that very awkward phase in the beginning of the pandemic where, you know, everyone tried to make, do these virtual happy hours to kind of keep that same sense of like co-workership and relationship. But after a while, it, you, it, you just kind of burn out, right? So if, I feel like for me, especially when I worked in media, which is when the majority of my pandemic time was, I was always used to being able to, if I have a question, I can just get up, go talk to someone. And it would just be like a two minute conversation. Whereas now, if I look at my calendar, I'll have meetings for what could have been a five minute conversation like all day. So I never really get work done, right? So I think for me, one of the biggest challenges as we've gone more virtu virtual is I'm, I'm very much a person that enjoys building relationships with my people, with the people I work with, especially as I have people reporting into me, um, you know, I'm very much like, I enjoy working with people who have personalities that work well with mine and that doesn't necessarily translate well in virtually, you know? So I think that's been like the biggest challenge for me to overcome and try to navigate for sure. Great, thank you, Mario. Uh, why don't we go over to Patricia? Yeah, no, I think this has been just a, a really interesting time, I would say, definitely, uh, you know, flexing and adjusting um, throughout this last year. So I have, um, you know, during my time in consulting, I did spend some periods of time working virtually. I mean, inevitably, you know, typically on Fridays, we would be home. Uh, you know, that's the, the usual travel schedule. And then every now and then we would have remote weeks. So that was kind of sprinkled in there throughout. Um, however, you know, starting out in a space where you've never met your team at all or the client at all face to face, um, that has posed um, a very different challenge. And, and I think I almost even took it for granted a little bit how challenging that can be, right, to build those relationships. Um, so just like Romario, I also very much enjoy um, the camaraderie, building those relationships. So um, I think we've just kind of had to adapt and find different ways um, to, to kind of reach across the screen, if you will, and build those relationships. So. Well, good. Thanks, Patricia. And in a few minutes, we'll, 
we'll get into your tips, tools, and techniques. What methods have you picked up on? But before we do that, Kevin, I know that you're you're ready to jump in on this topic. Yeah, I completely agree with both what Patricia and Mario said. Personally, I'm, I'm a big guy that likes to engage with people, get to know people outside of work. I think that goes a long way into the working relationship. I find if you have a relationship outside of work, typically your colleagues, your managers, your direct reports, they'll probably be a little bit more willing to answer a request, answer a question, um, which has been more difficult to navigate in the beginning. But I agree with Patricia. I think after a few months, a year and a half of doing this, um, there's some different tools and tricks that we can use to kind of break down those barriers, get to know people a little bit better and build those relationships a little bit stronger. That's great. And, you know, Mario, with your, you know, being fresh on the job, and I'm sure that we have people that are listening in today, that that's their situation. They're maybe anticipating joining a new organization or being new. Um, you know, describe a little bit of what are some of the things that you've done to bridge that barrier in, you know, starting a new position and probably having to do a lot of things virtually that you used to probably uh, do face to face? Um, yeah, I think for me, um, which might seem counter to like my previous point, um, being in a unique position of being new and like working with people I've never, I don't know, in person, um, I've made it a point to instead of just sending like a Teams message or a quick email, I'll send like a five minute video chat just so I can get used to, you know, the people I'm working with because again, just sending emails and messaging all the time, you're not able to pick up certain mannerisms that I think is crucial to, you know, being new in a company, but then also building that like rapport with your coworkers that you would hopefully want to build or maintain or cultivate. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Mario. Great tip. I mean, use video, right? Build some of that. Uh, you don't have a physical presence, but um, virtual video gives a lot of nonverbal cues into your mannerisms and helps to better inform uh, the listener or the one you're trying to communicate to as to what you know your emotional state is and things like that that are very, very important. Um, so that's a great tip. I appreciate that. Um, let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, Patricia or Kevin, either one, you can jump in. What are some things that you've learned uh, over the last 18 months that you realize that you're going to probably need to carry into the future as work becomes this kind of hybrid situation? I, I can take the first pass. Um, so something that Mario said kind of connected with me earlier, my meeting, my calendars are just back to back to back with meetings with something that can be handled via email. Um, so I think giving that time back to people during the day is important. So then you can have those five minute video conversations without being, without people being fatigued from being on video and on camera in meetings all day. I think that's important to proactively get stuff done via email. So then you can kind of have fun with your coworkers and get to know them a little bit better virtually. Um, I know Patricia has some good tips and tricks on some fun activities that Procurability has done. Um, that's a stand-up comedy show, some paint parties. So getting some fun activities like that incorporated to get to know our colleagues has been very helpful for us joining a remote work environment. Great, thanks Kevin. Patricia? Yeah, yeah, so just to add to that, I think Kevin brings up a good point. You know, I think Procurability as a whole has been doing a really great job of just getting folks engaged. And, you know, we have a lot of folks joining brand new out of undergrad and, and who are brand new to the organization and may have never met each other before. So um, there's a lot of emphasis around that. And, you know, these coffee chats, so making sure folks uh, get to know folks across the firm and set up these, uh, these uh, meet and greets and also coffee chats and, and things like that. Um, and we've done all these just kind of like virtual activities together, like painting with a twist or um, uh, putting together like a little, like a succulent thing um, and, and doing that uh, kind of as a firm and, and even having a holiday party. So um, I think those things have really kind of helped bridge that gap. And, uh, you know, something else that I've done is, you know, I'll try as much as I can just to 
either Teams message people, reach out directly, um, just to have those really quick conversations, not necessarily set up a meeting for it, or keep the meetings to 15 minutes or less on someone's calendar. Um, that's another thing. We don't always need to block off a half hour necessarily. Um, uh, yeah, and then I mean, even, even just if we're you know, not on video, I think people pay a lot more attention to uh, your voice, the way you're sounding, the way you're coming across and your inflection. Um, I've even had people mention before, you sound really flustered or you sound tired. Are you okay? <laughs> and it's like, well, no, no, not necessarily, but you know, I'll pay more attention to that next time. So, so I think people are kind of, you know, looking for other, other cues or other ways to sort of connect or gauge what's going on on the other end. So. Yeah, those are a lot of really good tips and, you know, continuing on in that vein. Um, have you noticed some things like one thing that I noticed is that if I turn my camera on and I'm in a meeting, then other people turn their camera on and everyone seems to come into the meeting without the camera on and, and, and kind of waits to see like conversation chicken. Is, is this going to be a camera on meeting or not? Has anyone else raised your hand? Is that, have you noticed some of that? So what I want to do is just encourage everyone that you probably have more influence than what you think in making the connections a little more real, even through a virtual environment by how you choose to show up. And um, that's just a, a personal observation that I've had. Uh, anyone else, Kevin, what, what are some other thoughts? How can we make our virtual time more effective with others? I agree. Um, it, it's always follow the leader. Um, if one person does it, everyone else will throw on the video. Um, but I, I think having the meetings kind of be more scheduled, have an agenda, know what you got to do. Um, I think people are getting frustrated in recent times with the over overkill of meetings. So making sure that they're efficient, scheduled, agendaed, and making sure you also have time for that informal conversation, just a minute or two to make introductions if someone's new to the room. Um, I think that's something that's kind of been forgotten. Um, making those introductions, if you have a new analyst on a call that has not met the client or not met the team, make sure to make that introduction because oftentimes they can just be an attendee on a list and won't even be recognized for being uh, participating in the conversation. So what I hear you saying, Kevin, is a little bit that we, we need to be mindful of others and we need to probably interact differently because um, I know that I have, I, I have relied a lot on physical presence to communicate my message and f messages for me. Maybe it's because, you know, this is kind of what I do for a living. So I'm, I'm acutely aware of how eye contact and nonverbal uh, communications affect or enhance the message or uh, your presence. But in a virtual world, uh, we have to do it a little differently. So I hear you saying that, you know, we need to be mindful of that. We need to make sure that, you know, we're taking that extra step or we're reaching out or we're soliciting the input. Uh, whereas in a, in a room with eight people, a head nod or a smile might let you know that they're in or that they're following or that they're tracking. Whereas in a virtual environment, um, someone may drop out of the conversation and you don't have those verbal cues to tell you uh, that you just lost someone. Um, along those lines, uh, Mario, what are, um, what are some of the lessons that you're kind of picking up or learning or what are some kind of new practices that you think that you might need to apply or, or you know, recommendations you would give to others based on your experience? Yeah, for me, I think, and this might just be a side effect of this work from home being coupled with like being quarantined for the majority of the time. Um, I think the advice I'd give it is more personal and less like work related. Um, because I think one of the things I've begun to realize, um, two things. Um, first is that my time is like super valuable now. Um, so time that I would spend, you know, commuting or getting ready in the morning, um, just so I can maintain that still being able to wake up early when I do have to go back to the office. I ha sort of have like a morning ritual to get myself ready. You know, I'll make myself coffee, walk my dog, do yoga or read, just so like by the time, you know, I have my first meeting at 8 a.m., I've been up for at least an hour and I'm like ready to go, you know? Um, yeah, I forgot what my second point was gonna be, so I'll just leave it at that. The importance of like 
having a morning routine and to get you in that work mode versus, and I think there was a period of time in quarantine, at least for me, where at an eight o'clock meeting, I'd wake up at 7.50, roll out, and I'm here, I'm ready to go, you know? Um, so, yeah. Good, thank you. Um, Patricia, we've been talking a lot about some of the to-dos. Have you picked up on anything not to do, or have you dropped into any kind of negative habits that really ha have proven not to be really effective? Yeah, you mean that I've seen or, or that I yeah, do? Yeah, of course it wouldn't be you, but yeah, <laughs> something you've seen someone else do. Yeah, fair enough. Um, no, I mean, uh, probably sending too many emails. And I think, you know, kind of like we've been talking about setting up too many meetings, just wanting a meeting for everything, right? Um, so just, you know, finding a different way to approach that or, or sometimes even just, you know, kind of working through things, letting things sit or, or finding a way to approach things with your team in a different way, you know, so that it's not tons of emails, tons of meetings. And then also, I think, you know, kind of to, to the point that you made earlier, Randy and Kevin, in terms of bringing people along and, um, and not always having those sort of the, the cues, you know, you're not sitting in the room and you can't see if folks have buy-in and, and kind of, um, you know, it's a little bit more challenging to see what's going on when you're communicating with an entire group and, and we're all doing it virtually. Um, I think, you know, finding different ways to gain people's buy-in and their engagement and their involvement. Um, for me personally, that's been uh, one of the most challenging things um, just on my team and working through some of that. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, actually, one of mine, I'm just going to share a little bit. What One of my bad habits is maybe a little bit of what I, I heard Mario saying that, you know, I, can, I roll into meetings now without the same level of preparation that I used to have when it was a face-to-face -face meeting. I, I'm not sure why, um, but some reason I feel like I can come in, you know, in early on in, in, you know, the pandemic virtual world. I was traveling three weeks out of the month meeting with clients and then all of a sudden everything went virtual. And so I was not putting, you know, I used to have what I called fly time when I'm on the airplane, figuring out strategies and whatnot for the conversations that I was going to be having, but all of that disappeared. And what I didn't realize is that I had to do the same amount of preparation and I had to make time for that. And, and so that was kind of a, a bad habit I got into. And now I've kind of corrected it by, by actually blocking time off of my calendar to think strategically about all the meetings I'm gonna have. And I don't know about you, but it seems like the number of meetings have proliferated, like they've just ballooned. Uh, I will jump in and say um, one other thing I've taken away and I assure people, like, you know, when you're in an office, if you're working eight hours a day, we all know you're not really working eight hours a day, you're talking with people and stuff like that, right? And I think at least for a good portion of this work from home situation, you know, I've. I felt this pressure where I'm like, I need to be as productive, which means I'm working all eight hours a day. Um, and I've made it a point to just like, what I do is like, I use a Pomodoro technique, you know, where I'll work for like 25 minutes, take five minute break, and then every like four hours take like a 30 minute break or something. Just so I'm still maintaining my level of productivity, right? But I'm not feeling that burnout or that pressure to be productive for eight hours a day, which can be tough, especially when you don't have that separation of like work and home, you know, which I think does take a toll after a while. That's great comments, great point. Kevin? I agree. I think the the lines between work and home are, are very blurred. I am currently in my living room. Um, <laughs> so kind of learning to define that work-life balance was really difficult for me in the beginning. Um, I was having a lot of calls and after the calls, I was still needing to get my work done. So I would end up working hours that I, I would not suggest working. It, it kind of dragged on my physical and mental um, ability a bit. And I had to reevaluate and readjust and be like, all right, how, how important is this call for me to make right now? And I started declining some calls. And I talked to my manager. I was like, all right, like I, I do not need to be on this. I'm going to focus on the work I need to do. And then that allowed me to get some time back in my day. 
Um, so setting those boundaries up with your manager, I think is very important. So you can still maintain that work-life balance, um, which, which is important. I think mental health, um, Randy, you, you mentioned that before the call, but mental health is, is definitely a big factor in COVID um, with people working remote. A lot of people might be living alone and not have a lot of people to kind of lean on. So I think respecting boundaries is, is important. Setting those up for yourself is, is equally as important. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I'm hearing a theme both from you and from Kevin and Patricia, and it's, you know, people who are intrinsically motivated to work um, and you're engaging your work with a level or degree of passion, you have to be careful because you can overdo it. You can overstride, you know, you can, uh, and a virtual work environment with no commute provides the perfect opportunity to like overindulge in your passion if, if you love your work. And so creating those boundaries, I loved uh, a lot of what Mario was saying about, um, you know, some, uh, I don't know, mindful disciplines, spiritual dif uh, disciplines, whatever you want to call them, but it's those mental timeouts, those breaks, you know, uh, cognitively, you need to give your brain, your, your brain a break. Um, I think our, our veterinarian would, would agree with that. Um, anyway, th this has really been a great conversation. We only have a few minutes left. If there are any questions uh, from the audience, uh, please forward them. We might be able to slip one in, but we do want to honor your time and wrap this up and, and move um, kind of uh, transition everyone back to their regular activities. I've really enjoyed the conversation with each one of you. And um, the last thing I would say is if you have any final kind of lessons learned, parting kind of comments or thoughts that you would like to leave uh, with those who are listening in and maybe struggling with this, because quite honestly, um, I struggle not so much with others. I struggle with myself about you know, it's an internal struggle about how to give myself a break, how to take it easier, how, you know, not to put more pressure on myself to produce more, all of those things that seem to come more easily in this virtual world. Um, but go ahead and let's, every one of you can take uh, just a few moments uh, before we turn it back over to Kunal. Uh, Kevin, do you have a final thought? Sure. Um, I'd say don't be shy. Everyone that you're working with is a human at the end of the day, and they will have understanding as to what you might be going through um, work-wise and developing that work-life balance, I think is, is critical. So don't be shy, talk to your manager, talk to your peers, talk to your colleagues, and, and I, I think it's uh, very beneficial to uh, reach out. Thank you, Kevin. Mario? Um, yeah, I think um, I take some solace in knowing that I'm not the only one going through this whole quarantine pandemic, which has caused us to be virtual. And then secondly, um, just my life mantra, like closed mouths don't get fed, you know? So if you don't speak up, you don't share how you're feeling, then you can't seek the appropriate assistance or resources that you'll need to do your work at the kind of level you would hope to be performing at. Thank you. Patricia. Yeah, um, I'll piggyback off of what uh, you know, Kevin and Romario and you, Randy, brought up, but set boundaries. Um, I think that's also one of the largest things I struggle with as well. So block out that time on your calendar so you, your calendar can't get booked up even more. Block out time to have dinner with your family and do your activities, you know, work out, things like that. So definitely set boundaries. Great. Thank you so much. And thanks, everyone, for participating. Kanal, are you going to wrap us up? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again. Yeah, as Randy, men Randy mentioned, thank you for joining and sharing your perspective on this topic. It kind of transitioned from, you know, operating in a virtual world to, uh, you know, maintaining a high level of mental fitness and also uh, managing yourself better. So thank you uh, for sharing your stories. Uh, we will be having another uh, roundtable session, like I mentioned at the top of the hour um, on Thursday. This is going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and we're really excited about this one. It's a, uh, it's a uh, uh, another um, uh, spotlight session on job opportunities that are available from our customers. Uh, so we will be hosting a session with Omnicom Media Group around uh, some experienced level job opportunities that they have available. Uh, so if you're interested in digital marketing or uh, client management roles, 
uh, please join this session to learn more about how uh, managers and strategists within the organization are succeeding um, and living out their day-to-day uh, -day in those roles. So look forward to hosting that session on Thursday. Uh, one final note before we end this uh, session, if you have uh, any uh, interest in connecting with one of these mentors from a one-on-one -on -one perspective for personalized support and guidance on this topic or anything that you are uh, uh, looking to achieve in your career, please reach out to us in the concierge channel um, on the app. There's a, a tab for that. Uh, you can just ping us and let us know that uh, you want to connect with one of these mentors and we will make that connection based off of their availability and, and time commitment that they have uh, on the platform. So, uh, we will respect everybody's time, but if you are open to, uh, if you do want to connect with uh, one of these mentors, please let us know and we'll make those connections. Uh, with that, I will end this uh, conversation and, and discussion. Uh, thank you again for joining and we look forward to our next session. Bye everyone. Take care. Thank you, bye.